How can anti-psychiatry and psychiatric survivor communities grow and flourish? I think this is a question worth asking. First, let me be clear. How do I define anti-psychiatry? Anti-psychiatry has had many definitions placed upon it over a number of years. I personally define anti-psychiatry as being anti-coercion, anti-psychiatric coercion, and being against psychiatric human rights abuses. Psychiatric coercion and psychiatric human rights abuses are so prevalent, anti-psychiatry seems like an appropriate term to utilize, if a one-word shorthand is desirable. Additionally, psychiatrist Thomas Saws, who wrote books like Liberation by Oppression and Psychiatric Slavery, he was labeled as being anti-psychiatry, despite vehemently rejecting the label of being called anti-psychiatry. Thomas Saws's last book, or close to last, was called Anti-Psychiatry Quackery Squared. In Anti-Psychiatry, the book by Saws, he actually discusses the history of anti-psychiatry and why he thinks that's not really a valid idea or term. But regardless, he was labeled as being anti-psychiatry, to the best of my knowledge, by quite a few individuals, and I would likely be labeled a similar way. So my philosophy is, why reject the term? And just own it and choose how I define it and be clear how I define it. So then within anti-psychiatry communities, how can we grow these communities? How can we help them to flourish? And what's the point of growing these communities and helping them to flourish? Well, I see the point of growing them, the purpose of growing them, and also the psychiatric survivor communities. I see the purpose of growing them is grassroots support, grassroots activism. Having a grassroots support system and community where people aren't giving each other medical advice, but still being able to share anecdotal experiences. Since a lot of mainstream psychiatric systems are full of propaganda and arrogant stupidity, and like the book Psychiatry, the Science of Lies by psychiatrist Thomas Saws might indicate, a lot of mainstream psychiatry functions on dishonesty and lies. Hence, in the book Psychiatry, the Science of Lies, Thomas Saws indicates that psychiatry should really properly be called pseudology, the art and science of lying. And if you want more details on that, well, please read the book Psychiatry, the Science of Lies. That's not specifically what this video is about. So whether it's how individuals have successfully hyperbolic tapered off psychiatric drugs as far as sharing anecdotal experiences or talking about legal strategies for stopping psychiatric human rights abuses and also pervasive amounts of lack with authentic informed consent psychiatric prescribers not telling the truth or the full truth about what potential side effects are or denying adverse experiences people have with the drugs they prescribe so on and so forth these communities whether it's psychiatric survivor or anti-psychiatry or whatever you want to call it can be useful to have grassroots support especially considering that this issue is pervasive all over the United States and within individual towns or cities there may not be tons and tons and tons of individuals who have had problems with psychiatry that would then go on to gravitate towards an anti-psychiatry perspective 
or identify as someone within the psychiatric survivors movement or an ally of those in the psychiatric survivors movement. So how can we grow these communities? I really recently saw a guerrilla marketing tactic where someone seemed to spray paint, hopefully on a private road, uh, information about anti-psychiatry in communities. Yeah, don't do anything illegal. Please don't do anything illegal. So, But if you have a place where you can legally graffiti like a private wall, or if you just want to create art on a canvas or draw on a piece of paper with a pen, please do that. Just don't break the law. Don't get yourself into trouble. So you could make a YouTube video or start a YouTube channel or go on social media or BitChute or Rumble or Odyssey. Or you could start a community on a social network, an X Twitter community or a new forum on Reddit or just participate in various communities that already exist. You'd create a social media account, you could follow social media accounts, you could write a book, you could talk to family or friends. You could network in your local community. You could go on Craigslist and start a group or meetup.com. Or if you know of community bulletin boards, you could post those. You can go on Nextdoor and post. I don't know, there, there's a million and one ways. There's an infinite number of ways that one can potentially, you know, join a community or create a community so on and so forth. So again, I am anti-coercion, anti-psychiatric coercion. You can also look into agorism, if you're curious. Agorism is a fancy word for voluntarism, or being a voluntarist. And that is in the context of having voluntary consensual relations, whether those are economic relations, or interpersonal, or with a doctor, or with family, or so on and so forth voluntarism, agorism. You know, in theory, the Libertarian Party should be against psychiatric coercion. Thomas Saws wrote a whole book about this, Faith in Freedom, by psychiatrist Thomas Saws. If my memory serves me, the subtitle has to do something about libertarian principles, something like that. Might be wrong. So there's many ways to maintain or grow or foster a community. All this is sort of food for thought and in some ways it's also perhaps a sort of call to action. But only if you voluntarily want to take such action. So if people who are against psychiatric coercion and are against the many blatant and pervasive abuses in psychiatry, even if those abuses are just a lack of true informed consent, or lies or propaganda, psychiatric lies or psychiatric propaganda. There's much that can be done to help alleviate the problem of coercive psychiatry and of arrogant psychiatric prescribers who don't seem to really authentically care about the individuals that they are supposedly caring about. Actions speak louder than words. And many psychiatric prescribers are just arrogant jabronis. Maybe read the paper by Bonnie Burstow. The title is something to the effect of Child Psychiatric Drugging as a Form of Child Abuse, Not a Radical Proposition. So meditate on this if you want to. And yes, there is advantages in community, whether trying to, you know, get plaintiff, plaintiffs together for a lawsuit or have a class action lawsuit or file a bunch of formal complaints against medical boards or against, well, through medical boards against psychiatric prescribers or whoever else or against hospitals. So I'll end it there. Yeah, consider growing community or being part of a community or fostering communities if you want to. So, you know, guerrilla marketing is good. Again, just don't get yourself in trouble. Don't break any laws. And together we can stop psychiatric human rights abuses. Also, counselors and therapists and psychiatrists and prescribers, if they want to, they should be speaking out against these issues, against abuses in psychiatry. But yeah, so be part of a community if you want to. Limitless peace.